All right, so this is a three-player setup of Torres, and you'll see that we have one of each character marker on a castle spot, as well as the king has been placed as well. Now, when you do this, you're going to kind of go around the table and take turns putting down your character, and then one player will set the king marker down. Now, each player will have a set of castles in reserve, as well as five character meeples. And they will also receive 10 cards in their player color, which will indicate different special options or special actions that they can do throughout the course of the game. So the game is played in a series of years and each year has seasons. Now if you look here this is a three player card and it shows you that the first year you have four seasons and the second and third year you have three seasons each. Now this also indicates the number of castles that each player is given per year. Now on your turn, you'll have five action points that you can spend and take a number of different actions. Now first, you may place a knight, so you can add a character. So you can do this in an adjacent square that is not diagonal, but it has to be adjacent to one of your knights that you already have in play. Now this knight has to be on the same level, so for example, if this, were how the, if this was the layout of the board, you couldn't place a knight on a higher level like that. You would still have to place it a level lower. Now as another action, you may move a knight, and each space move is one action point. Now you may move down any number of levels, and that would be one action point, and you may move up one level for one action point. So again, for example, if this stack were three high, you may move down for one action point. You would not be able to move up because this is greater than one step up. This is three steps, so you would not be able to step up that way. Now as another action, you may expand your castle. So you would pick one of your stacks. Now again, if you take a look here at, this, uh, at the year card that we have, you will see that the stacks are pre-laid pre out. So you have two stacks here with three, and two stacks with two, and then you have two threes and a two on either of these. So what that means is the first year, and I have them set up here already for, this is the blue and the yellow player, but there's a, a three stack and a three stack and then two two stacks. When you're going to expand your castle, you can pick any stack that you want to, but you cannot take from multiple stacks. And the stack that you choose to use, you have to be able to play all your castle pieces or you lose them unless and what I mean by that is with your action points so each one of these will be one action point to place now let's say you only have two action points left you obviously would not be able to place this third one now you would lose this one last castle unless you could place it on another stack that has fewer than three castles now you may never have four castles so if I, if I take these and I only use two of them, I could not put that, this last one on this stack of three because it would be one too many. But I could place it here to use on another turn or place it here. If you don't have anywhere else you could place it in your stack, you would just return this to the supply. All right, now when you place your castles and expand them, you may place them anywhere on the board. So again, if I'm the yellow player, I could expand the castle that I'm in or I could expand this castle here. I could expand my opponent's castle all the same. It really doesn't matter. You can place wherever you want. As another action, you may take an action card. When you do this, you take three cards. You look at them and you select the one that you want. In this case, this one gives you six action points or this one will let you jump up two steps instead of one. And you would pick the, the one that you want. And then you could place the other two back in the deck and you could choose whether to place them on top of the deck, on the bottom of the deck, or you could place both on top or both on the bottom. As another action, you may play an action card. And now this actually does not take any action points, but you can only play one per season. Once you play it, it is out of the game. And finally, for an action, you may move your knight one space on the scoring track. Now an interesting item of note here, let's say I was the blue character, and I had one point of uh, one action point left, and I wanted to move up the track, I would not share this space with my opponent. I would actually jump over them and go to the spot 
in front of it. So now one note on movement, let's say for example, the board were set up as such. You may move your knight in one of the doors on the castle and out any other door on the castle, as long as it's on the same level or lower. So for example, I could move into this door here and come out over here if I wanted to. Now when it comes to scoring, you will score each castle that you have a knight in and you will score the base of the castle, which is how sprawling the castle is. So for example, right here, this castle would be a base of four and you would multiply that by the height of your tallest knight. So in this case, this knight is on the first level. So you would multiply one by four and I would get four points if I were the blue knight. Now, if I had a yellow knight up here, yellow would score four base times three high. So yellow would score 12 points for this. Now, if yellow had multiple knights, he would only score one time for this castle because you will only score once per castle, no matter how many knights you have in it. All right, now another item of note is you can never have a castle be taller than its base. So in this example, this is a base of four. I could not make this castle five pieces high because the base is four. However, if I first extended it out to five, then I would be able to place this fifth one. And also when you're extending your castles, you may not extend your castle if it will connect to another castle. So this movement here would be illegal. And I also could not extend this way. But I could extend this way here because it's not going to touch another castle. But again, I would not be able to place a piece here or piece here because it would touch this castle. Diagonal is okay. And at the end of each year, you will score the king. And in order to do that, let's say you build out a castle and you have multiple people are on it. The first year, anybody who is in the castle as the king, not only would they score this castle, for, so for example here, it's a base of four, and yellow here is on the first level, so yellow and blue would actually both get four points for this. Also, you would score the first year, if you're on the first level of the castle that the king is in, you will get five points. So in this case, blue and yellow would get an additional five points. Now, if green happened to be here and was on a second level, he would get no points because this is the first year and the king will only score those who are on the first level. On the second year, whatever castle the king is in, he will score the second level. So in this case, green would get points and blue and yellow would not. In the second year, the king is worth 10 points. And then finally, on the third year, the king will score all of those who are on a third level of the castle that the king is in. And the third year, the king will score you 15 points. All right, one other item of scoring that I should bring up is there are these things called master cards that are optional. And um, typically, you probably wouldn't play with them your first play while you get comfortable with the game. But if you look here, there's a whole stack of them that give you uh, different items to work for. Some might pay out at the end of the game, like in this case, at the end of the third year, if all of your characters are next to each other, you'd get 40 extra victory points. Um, this one is if any of your characters, any of your knights are in the uh, outer circle, you get two points per knight at the end of the first, uh, first year. What is that? Five points at the end of the second. And at the end of the third year, you get 10 points. So there's just other ways to gain points, kind of like in-game achievements, if you will.